will throw you into the street and I'll throw your bags after you and your crutches and your canes and all of that stuff. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today is the second part of our New Year's episode, which takes up the entirety of January, because why not? Because it was a big year, and there's a lot of stuff. But today we're not looking back. We are instead looking forward into a brave new future of stuff. Sounds like a good way of... I guess. I, I, it, I, yeah. yeah, I guess. I didn't really have a way I was going with that. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, we want to look forward, we want to take a look at stuff that we want to do, stuff that we would like to see, stuff that we're ho- we're, we're, we're definitely going to see, mm-hmm. maybe some stuff we're definitely not going to see, mm-hmm. but I promise not to talk about games that are coming out next year, probably because I don't know that much about them. No. I don't we, really we live in the past. No. Yeah. It's a wonderful place to be. Well, there's so much stuff in the past to catch up on, let alone keep up with the stuff in the future. A friend of mine just got Steam, yeah. literally just today, Ooh. got Steam. Good luck, or uh, she, and she, bye, bye, bye social. Oh, she got Dragon Age <laughs> on my recommendation because I'm a villain and yes. I understand this. You are a terrible person. Yes, yes, I am. And she said, "I, I, I think that I don't think that this is going to be a really great for my wallet." I'm like, "I'm like, let me explain this to you succinctly." Four years ago, I got Steam. Someone sent me a copy, a copy of Borderlands, and I was like, "Borderlands, this game sounds stupid." Blah, blah, blah. Digital distribution isn't the future. It's not doing anything. I was horribly wrong. And now I have almost 400 Steam games. That's not counting expansions and DLC. And I have spent thousands of dollars. Well, and when we looked at it, you have some 500-something gigs of space taken up by Steam, by your Steam folder. And then, well, listen, all right? I, I have priorities, and they're completely out of whack but that's not the point <laughs> the point is that uh, it's going to be exciting uh, but I am I am firmly ensconced in finishing all these games that I already have mm. uh, but none of this has to do with her icebreaker which, in, which is in fact what is the thing you are most looking forward to or one of the things you are greatly looking forward to in 2015 for me it is um as as I've talked before on the show, I've started exercising more, and uh, and I broke my ankle at the end of November, so I've, it's been put on hold a little bit. But I'm just getting back into it now. And one of the things I wanted to do once I got the habit established for exercising, then I was going to go into um, being more intelligent about my strategies for for um, being healthier. So. It, mostly just eating and uh being physically active and so one of the things that i'm kind of looking at with a little bit of an interest but not sure if it'll fit within my life is the quantify itself Uh, it seems interesting the idea of finding ways to quantify your day-to-day life um but i don't know if it's just a convenient tool um or sorry, not convenient, a convenient, you know, thing to distract yourself, right? Like it's really fun to quantify yourself, but are you actually doing anything meaningful with it? Um, so uh, an example could be, it could be interesting to track your steps in a day. Um, but if it doesn't in any way motivate you to make more steps or to in any way think critically about your, the amount of time you sit down in a day, then it's really just a toy. It's the same with when I'm looking at a new cell phone. Do I really want to get the most high-end thing? Like, do I want to spend a lot of money for the best tech when I probably won't use... Ryan, new phones, you can you can hump them against other phones to transfer data. Yeah, I know. It's called thumping. No, I know. Uh, with a PH. Yeah, NFC tags. I understand the concept of it. I, I have not used it. My, my phone's three years old. I've never once transferred data through a bump. We could phone hump right now. I know we could. Anyway, just thump live on the cast. <laughs> well, in a recording on the cast. So the thing that I'm looking forward to is... It's not really called thumping. I'm just kind of hoping that catches on. <laughs> um, recently, uh, smartwatches and stuff are starting to, to make the rounds. Yeah. But in addition to smartwatches, um, smart wearable tracking devices are starting to, to um, be released. Um, Jawbone, Fitbit... Uh, Samsung's got a few, so I'm what I'm looking forward to in 2015, first quarter, they're going to be releasing new lines of uh, wearable or trackable uh, fitness uh, devices that usually go on your wrist, uh, and a lot of the newer upper model ones will track 
um, your heart rate, continuous heart rate tracking. It'll uh, track your sleeping patterns, steps. Uh, some of them have a GPS built into it if you're like buying the sports watches. So mm-hmm. for people doing triathlons and races and whatnot, it can... I have seen those fun tumblers where people draw dicks using their uh, GPS tracking stuff. I probably don't have the endurance to do something like that. It'd be a well, very, it would be a, it'd be a very small, small one. It would be a small penis. It would be a very small one or a very blown up map. Um <laughs> Uh, but that's that's a, something that I'm I promise at. it was bigger in the picture. Zoom in, zoom in. Why is it digitized, Chris? Uh, why, why is it so boxy? Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to in 2015. Is there a new batch of tech is going to be released? Pixelated running penises is what I got from this, probably. And uh, and so I don't know if it will fit within my life or if it'll just be a really expensive thing that I buy and then sits in a corner. Um, but that's right now the thing I'm looking at most. Fair enough. Ah, uh, I am, I'm looking forward to playing some more live music and uh, definitely hitting some open mics, doing some doing, doing some shows with Kaylee and maybe with a certain other human beings, which would be really fun, mm-hmm. but also to seeing live music. I am hoping, uh, George Watsky is planning on doing another tour and I am hoping that he comes to Toronto again. Uh, I know that his last Toronto show did really well, so hopefully. Um, Carsey Blanton is doing some tour- touring in the northern states. So I know Kaylee and I are hoping to get down there and check her out. She is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, if Hank Green goes on tour, I will attempt to move heaven and earth. It, it, he only usually tours in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will or, attempt to move... Or John Green. John, John, I, I, John Green doesn't do a lot of touring with a band. I would go with you to see John Green speak. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's true. I, I, that would be really fun. Um, well, John Green, I've actually I actually met very briefly at VidCon, and he's a really nice guy. I assume that Hank Green is also a super nice guy. But uh, um, who's the other one? There? It, it, nice Peter is supposed to be doing a bit of touring, and he also gives a really cool show. Mm-hmm. So I would be excited. Like if he is, he usually winds up in like Chicago, which isn't that far, but it's probably at the, like the limit. Of farness without like making it like a week long trip. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that that is my my thing. I don't spend enough time sort of going to concerts and um doing doing live things. It's funny the the thing I, I noticed when I watched our Christmas video, um, which you can see over Ryan's face if you haven't seen it already. It's really cool. But we play. Partly because we're in a sort of quiet family setting, but we play we play like a bunch of introverts. It's really kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I blame the fact that most of the time when I play, I'm like crammed into a space at an event where there's tons of ten other things going on. But uh, yeah, I want to. I want to. You got to go. It, 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 just like you have to listen to music to be a better musician, you have to read to be a good writer. I want to go to shows. So that I can create better shows mm-hmm. and create better content because that's what I love doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that is my my thing that I'm looking forward to is hopefully seeing more live music. And I've got to check the tour dates uh, for all those artists. You can find links to them below. Uh, I may also put them in the YouTube thing, but probably not because I some of them definitely don't have YouTube channels. Um, I would love to go see Scott Bradley, but he does not tour. Once again, I like how the things you're looking forward to are collaborative and sharing with other people and sharing the experience and the thing that i'm looking forward to is something that will improve myself yeah once well, again season two the, the consistency virtue, is key virtue, i think virtue ethics returns jesus christ the undercurrent we're not talking about virtue ethics this season ryan last season we exhausted the topic of virtue ethics oh. we said everything that could have possibly been said that's probably not true. We're probably going to talk about it again this season, but that's not the point. I, at my New Year's party, I was listening in on an interesting conversation about um, Catholicism and virtue ethics and bioethics. Mm-hmm. So who knows? There could be a return of that because it was a really interesting conversation that oh I my. eavesdropped in on. Nice. Um, what do we got here? Uh, personal goals. I mean, speaking of your goals for self improvement and mm-hmm. you know, like generally being sort of a responsible adult, mm-hmm. um, which. You know, well, at least one of us is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a couple of somewhat less responsible goals that you wanted to share, publicly yeah. sharing them and thus making them into binding contracts, which our viewers will force us to adhere to, <laughs> because uh, otherwise we will uh, only we will we will merely be forced to die with honor mm-hmm. on the stream. 
we may we may do a live stream for for the seppuku thing um it would probably be the first time uh first time somebody died on no no like, like someone committed seppuku on the stream like like died with honor did i mean sure other people have died on streams but did they die with honor they probably did that's kind of a horrible thing to say yeah i don't, um, know. I don't watch those videos <laughs> i don't either <laughs> i stay out of that corner of reddit and yeah. many other corners of reddit yeah um although I, I keep every time i think of it i i, I remember thinking back to a day nine stream that i was watching uh day nine likes to crack his neck on stream and he had this really tough crack i can't actually crack my neck so it has no effect uh you can't but you can hear it through his mic and uh, he, he's, he had this really tough crack, and he's just sort of, if, you, if, you're, if you're listening to this, what I'm doing is grabbing my head and moving it around. If you're watching this, I'm explaining something entirely useless because you can see me. Um, and he sort of got this pop, and he's like, man, I wonder what it would have been like if I would have just accidentally killed myself on the stream. <laughs> I'm sure someone would have called emergency services. I hope so. Uh, I mean, if they're willing to, um, what's it called? SWAT. If it's, if they're willing to SWAT somebody on a live stream, oh god, SWATing is terrible. SWATing is terrible, and it is not in any way funny. Uh, it's funny in a movie, I suppose. <laughs> if it's a gag in a movie, it might be funny, but it's definitely not something that happens. I'm not even convinced of that. Remind me to tell you my niece's iCarly story. Anyway, okay. uh, uh, but anyway, no, none of these are are your personal goals, which are no. in fact. So I have a I have a couple fun goals. I'll hold off from that. Um, I will say so. Back season one, when I talked about how to celebrate my birthday, uh, I listed all of those things that I do um, in order to make my birthday special, which I actually forgot one, which was suit up. I, I forgot that. Um, so oh, yeah. Putting on a suit is, is part of my birthday because at the time when I made that that resolution for my birthday i didn't dress in my suit nearly enough now i find i dress in my suit far too often it's a little bit less special um <laughs> what is it <laughs> now though different rule new rule no uh, pants but at, but at the time i, I said i you know I, I don't wear my suits or i don't wear my formal attire nearly enough for my birthday i'll dress up uh anyways but uh i decided to add something new this year uh on my birthday i will create a challenge or a set of challenges for the upcoming year for myself and this year, my challenge is something simple. Uh, I challenged myself to not purchase for personal use any books um, because I have... You are also not allowed to expense books on behalf of podcast-related research. Yes. Uh, the only exceptions would be if it was education-related. So if I, if I was in school and I had to buy a textbook or something that for some reason for work or for a charity organization that I was a part of, I absolutely had to buy this. Um, but for generally just i purchase no books no new books i either have to read the books that i have or i have to support my local library and borrow the book um so that's that's a new challenge that i have going forward for this year and hopefully come december when we do a little bit of a year in review or just around around my birthday i'll be able to confirm do, do you ever worry that your elaborate birthday related rituals I mean, to put this in perspective, my practice for my birthday, as I mentioned, is to forget about it mm -hmm. until a week before it's happening. Mm -hmm. Continue to forget about it until someone reminds me and then go, oh yeah, I totally wanted to do a thing. Um, and then attempt to do a thing. But do you ever worry that your birthday-related rituals uh, will grow so elaborate that your birthday will in fact take up two days? Well, um, in some sense it has. Uh, for example, last year... So no, you don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. Uh, Sarah challenged me on it this year. Of, <laughs> don't you want to... Because my birthday fell on a Monday when I had to work an eight or nine hour a day. And then on top of that, we decided to do uh, dinner with some friends. And we invited Jim and a few others to, to sushi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was my birthday. <laughs> well, I figured it was your birthday, but uh, you weren't in your suit, so I didn't. I didn't, no, I didn't I, know I for wore, sure. I wore a suit to work, so uh, that's why I justified it. That so way. complicated. Um, it's, and Sarah's like, you know, we don't really have a lot of time to do this, this, and that. Like, for example, I didn't have time to physically go to the bookstore to pick up my book for my birthday, uh, and I ended up purchasing it online on Amazon. Um, but she said, "Why don't you, you know, do a couple of these things around your birthday?" My justification was. If I'm going to be arbitrarily doing things not on my birthday, what's the point of doing any of it on my birthday? <laughs> if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's so... Oh, no, what you need to do is create a week... Is, is in response, create a week-long birthday celebration. We'll call it Hucklepalooza. 
You know what? That wouldn't be a bad idea because uh, right now I have spread out several of my birthday things. Ryan, For example, Ryan, look. that's a horrible idea. Oh, okay. That's a horrible idea. But Hakopalooza will live on in our hearts and in the hearts of all of our listeners. Anyway, my goals, um, because now we're going to talk about me. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to record some music. I we got a lot of music on YouTube. I am hopefully going to do a song a month. And soon, the return of Music Fridays, which I'm excited for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a bunch of medieval uh, medieval drinking songs that I want to cover, and I've got a bunch of other stuff that I'm putting around with. And So soon, the return of Music Fridays would, will be really fun. But also, uh, we keep playing live shows, mm-hmm. and people keep coming up to us and saying, Hey, is there a place where I can buy your music? Mm-hmm. And I mean, they can see our music on youtube um but we don't have recordings of such a quality that we will feel comfortable selling them to people and having these people listen to them repeatedly um where we wouldn't you know wince at a part of it so we're gonna make some Mm -hmm. and we are going to host them on some kind of service probably itunes or Spotify or something else or several different ones and uh, yeah people will be able to buy our music pretty solid idea but uh, I'm excited there's, there's a lot of there's a mammoth amount of, of tactical stuff in the in the in the in, 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 in something that sounds very simple uh, there's gonna be uh, we're gonna be doing a ton of work with our new sound guy we're gonna be um, doing a, a bunch of recording in a, in a studio and it's going to be, we're going to have to learn a ton of new things. I'm really excited. Uh, I am not the professional anything half of Wuzu Ryan. So <laughs> Ryan is clearly our professional development half. Kaylee is our professional musician half. Gina is our professional everything else half. Um, Ryan Walsh is our professional academic part. Ryan Consul is our professional artist part. I am a guy who owns a guitar and a camera. That's pretty much it. But... I'm excited to learn a bunch of things. You're the professional glue that holds us all together. Oh, God. My my professional qualification is that I am super sticky. <laughs> yeah, well, it was your analogy. I guess that's true. Thanks for that, Ryan. Well, when it comes to your music, not the cutting the album part of it, but making more music. I mean, we I had a lot of fun. As terrible of a singer as I can be. and as You're not that bad. Well, it still took... I am so unprofessional it took us like an hour to fi- to do my- record my sections of the song <laughs> don't disclose the process no 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 <laughs> anyways for as terrible for that. as terrible as i was uh i actually had a lot of fun doing the music and i would be like i would like to be more involved in playing of the instruments um so like, like you would like to actually play the bass instead of have a broken ankle and hold it yes and my stepmom commented that i shouldn't i shouldn't move my fingers so much when i was playing the bass part. <laughs> she, she loved she loved the video uh she she was really impressed with what we did so at least we got a thumbs up from from dear old mom um but yeah yeah i, I wouldn't mind helping you out with making some sort of music even oh, if we'll it's totally just do that. one song this year but so, something new expanding it out oh, music fridays is gonna be a thing yeah oh man i miss music fridays uh there's a few other things i wouldn't mind doing in 2015 um i don't think i played magic at all in 2014 i bought some packs but i don't think i played magic the gathering at all in 2014 so um funny story ryan walsh and i did we did a video a year and a half ago Mm -hmm. um like possibly even on my old channel which Um, which video is it the con with the masks no 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 this was um this was back at uh we did a, a series. This is before he got eaten by his PhD, which oh. is why you don't see Ryan very around, around very much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, about uh, we, we we did a bunch of D and D stuff, and we taught and we cracked a pack of magic and sort of did some story ideas from it. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was those are packs of oh, I want to say Gate Crash. Oh, okay. So it was a while ago. Mm-hmm. But uh, at PAX East this year, which there are definitely some videos because that was during Vita. Uh, we both got back into Magic, and I think mm-hmm. I talked about it briefly then, and we have since been playing, we played the a cons pre-release and a couple other things, and uh, now we are like hopelessly addicted to Magic. Like you, I'm looking past the camera, and I can see Magic stuff all over the place, mm-hmm. stacks of cards that I still have to sort, and <sighs> such is the life of being an adult and being irresponsible. Yeah. 
Um, but yes, I also want to play more Magic because I don't have a lot of, like an organized play group or anything like that. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't mind playing more Magic and just making more time to play games with friends. Uh, I want to check out the two or three board game cafes here in town. I highly recommend Adventures Guild. If you're watching this in your local Kitchener Waterloo, go to Adventures Guild because it's a really good time. Yeah, and so definitely support them because I can't imagine nerds sitting around can necessarily always pay the bills so we need i to... endeavor be, to be as profitable as i can for yeah. them. i buy a lot of snacks yeah no definitely buy something at least once an hour <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, um uh, yeah you want to play more magic yeah and the last thing i want to do is um i want to build a pc for myself um you know not making the motherboard obviously i'm just going to buy the pieces and snap them together myself and hopefully not snap any that's usually what people mean when they say yeah. build a pc yeah right. but uh i i helped a buddy build a pc just before i came back from the christmas holidays uh mm -hmm. really enjoyed it it was it demystified the process a lot for me it wasn't nearly as complicated as i thought um and in general in 2014 i started to learn how to do things for myself like being handy around the house um, fixing my car, building a PC. So in addition to building a PC, I just want to continue to, to make things, either woodworking or I want to go over to Ryan's with you and film a blacksmith session where maybe oh, yeah, I'll get totally shirtless and just hammer away on the anvil for a bit. <laughs> I You and, laugh, but I have seen Ryan work shirtless a bunch of times. I, well, I mean, I sweat a lot. I can only imagine how hot it would be. No, most, most, really? of the work, most of the work Ryan does is cold. Well, in that he's case... He's, he's an armor. I will just... Take off my shirt for no reason. Awesome shirtless podcast. Look forward to our shirtless XL live stream. <laughs> XL. Okay. Look, we got to fight the final boss of you're XL. A, XL, you're a dick. <laughs> uh, so that's something that I wouldn't I'm mind trying man. to do in uh, 20, 2015. We'll totally do that. We definitely want to experiment with some more content. God yeah. forbid some non-podcast based content, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, there's going to be more vlogs, but there's also... Uh, you want to yeah, you wanted to get together and do some blacksmithing. We want to do like... You know, we want to play a thing. We want to watch a thing. We're mm -hmm. going to play video games together. We might, maybe, possibly, uh, even play console games together so that Ryan can have a context in which he is better at video games than me. Now, to be fair, if if these people, if our viewers have seen me playing Bioshock Infinite, they realize that I am not that good at video games. So it's probably the other way around uh, what you but... what you lack in technical finesse you make up for in witty, <laughs> witty commentary in, in the ability to shriek the ability to be confused to minimize human trauma yeah. and enthusiasm yeah oh man i feel really bad for elizabeth mostly because she's stuck in this whole game with me <laughs> but uh yeah we definitely we want to experiment with some more um some more some different kinds of stuff get out from behind these chairs get out from behind these lights and go and do some stuff say goodbye to elliot who's sitting right back here but he, elliot will still be in bunches of videos because he's awesome um elliot is my favorite plushie oh wait well, hey, but now that we've got the podcasting like like down like yeah, solid the, we're just the technical side of the podcasting we have the the basis for that so now maybe it's time to have some fun and experiment going on we haven't been having fun up to this point a little bit of fun. I mean, I, the, the, the lights tried to kill me tonight. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Yeah. I was fine for me. I almost died of mercury and, and, light, and glass and glass poisoning. Yeah, well, I mean, the glass probably wouldn't poison you, but it would get, it would let the mercury in, which would do the job. Yeah. Um, yeah, the other thing we want to do is collaborate more. We do want to get out from behind these lights and out, and, and out from this set and go to other places and include other people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, 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 there's a lot of really cool people locally um, who are awesome and interesting and smart mm -hmm. and who have perspectives that aren't ours that's, and that's that are important. incredibly valuable. That's important. And we want to bring them to you and to us to improve the discussions that we have here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that. We're going to talk about how to put together a good show. We're going to talk about with, with a balloon artist. We're going to talk about... Um, public speaking with uh, well, probably also with a balloon artist actually probably talk about audio stuff mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know talk about a bunch of things I am really looking forward to 2015 but to be fair it has only been a couple of weeks yeah so uh, we still remain in that New Year's happy optimistic phase mm -hmm. don't we yeah it's usually within the first month that people stop going to the gym so I think you know, if we're if we're doing good by this point, hopefully we'll just carry the momentum. The forward. advantage of being me is that I never stop going to the gym. 
Ah, uh, yes, the gym at the gym. Maybe that would be a good thing to film. No. <laughs> that would be a horrible and embarrassing thing to film. It would make me feel bad. And look bad. Well, at least it wouldn't be me looking bad all the time. I'm going to cut that. Oh. Anyway, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. All right. You, it looks like you're shorter than me. This well, is the only time in the in the world when you are actually shorter than no, me. No, I think we talked about that last season, that my torso is actually, I think, shorter than yours. Yes. Should probably link to that. Gorilla. <laughs> promoting the podcast and we haven't even started it yet. Anyway.